Now the gap between the value of the Zimbabwean dollar on the formal market and the parallel market continues to widen, pushing the prices of commodities up. And since the start of the year, the Zimbabwe dollar has depreciated by about 35% on the official market and an estimated 70% on the informal market. This has pushed the prices of basic commodities up with some retailers now pegging prices using the black market rate. Some retailers are selling selected products exclusively in US dollars as shown in on the table on your screens. Prices of basic commodities have gone up significantly since December last year. Meanwhile, authorities, captains of industry and retailers in the country are seeking solutions to the price increases. A meeting has been scheduled for this week to discuss the price hikes. And of course, the big question is, will these engagements yield the much needed relief for local consumers? ZTN Prime's head of business, Andy Hodges, joins us now live to discuss this issue. Hey, Andy, how did we get here? And how can you can you possibly explain to us some of the facts? factors that have led to what we are experiencing currently. Most economists that I have spoken to attribute one thing to the continued depreciation of the Zimbabwe dollar on the parallel market, and that is money supply growth. Money supply growth, of course, is caused in two main ways in Zimbabwe. The first is through Treasury itself, through paying higher wages and salaries to public servants, and secondly, of course, paying suppliers of goods and services in Zimbabwe dollars, which they immediately rush to the parallel market to buy US dollars in their minds to retain value. This is what they say. Another way, of course, is through the central bank. Now, the central bank, there is something called retention. If you export, you have to pay 25% of your export proceeds to the central bank, and there are other retention schemes going around. The central bank, every time it does buy currency from exporters, they have to, again, pump Zimbabwe dollars into the market they say that over the last 12 to 18 months the increase in money supply is phenomenal as of december it even had reached as high as two trillion and other economists also point to the budget they say that the budget close to five trillion dollars for 2023 by itself expresses the fact that government will be releasing more and more zimbabwe dollars into the system as they fund ministries during the course of the year so issue here according to most economists is money supply growth and that's one thing that they stress the government needs to get under control now andy we've seen in the past some companies being blacklisted for fueling parallel market rates and we have also seen the introduction of gold coins as a store of value to reduce pressure on the u.s dollar all this was to try and control inflation what new solutions do you think can be considered to resolve the pricing situation well, what can they do? Well, first of all, let's let's applaud Cabinet for jumping onto the issue straight away and putting together a committee. Of course, the call is that the committee must move quickly and not really make it a talk show and we wait weeks and weeks before decisions come up. But to answer your question, what can they actually do? Well, obviously, looking at the easy things, the central bank can increase interest rates back up to over 200%. That is in a way or an effort to try and contain money supply growth. In other words, credit from the banks, which also creates money supply. They can get rid of the retentions from exporters that will mean that they won't be pumping in Zimbabwe dollars into the market obviously Treasury can be draconian they can immediately stop pumping money to suppliers particularly Zimbabwe dollars and they can increase their monitoring of such suppliers to ensure that they spend that money accordingly and not pump it into the parallel market of course they have tried to ban some suppliers from the procurement process who have done just that put their money into the parallel market but unfortunately that doesn't seem to matter. Suppliers of goods and services, the government continue to keep pumping the money onto the parallel market. Well, allegedly, at least. Another thing they can do, which is the draconian step, that's to dollarize. The question is, has the economy already dollarized? Some will say, yes, it has. So as a result, the government isn't doing anything new. They're just accepting the reality. However, dollarization is probably the last thing the Zimbabwe government wants to do. They're committed to a dual currency system. In fact, they're committed to bringing back the Zimbabwe dollar in the very near future. So turning off the tap, 
taps is one way of doing this and that is one way of reducing money supply another way of course is mopping up all the liquidity in the market any excess Zimbabwe dollars they should mop up they're hoping to try and do that through the gold backed digital tokens that's one way of mopping up money another way of course is you could raise bank statutory reserves forcing banks to pump more Zimbabwe dollars into the central bank where it's held at zero percent but the point is this there are measures that need to be taken the question is how quickly can the authorities and the central bank react because quite frankly Zimbabwean citizens are saying they need to react now they need to react today Thank you so much for that. That was our businessman, um, Andy Hodges, giving us some ideas on what can be done to rectify the ever-expanding gap that exists between the parallel market rate and the interbank market rate of the foreign exchange. Now, Industry and Commerce Minister Sekai Nzenza was not immediately available for comment on the scheduled meeting. But on Tuesday, she appraised Cabinet on the price and basic commodity supply situation. His recap of her address to journalists after the Cabinet meeting. Cabinet met and noted with deep concern the artificial shortages and recent increase in the prices of basic commodities. And these prices have negatively impacted on consumer welfare and in the economy. The Minister of Industry and Commerce would therefore like to assure the consumers that there is no shortages of basic commodities in the market and that government will continue to engage the private sector with the ultimate goal of ensuring that consumers continue to access basic commodities at affordable prices. Specific policies in response to the current situation will be issued by the relevant arms of government following an extensive consultation with the private sector.